Now, the nationwide protests against soaring cost of living continue as few people turned out in major cities on Monday. Now, this follows a report of police harassment of protesters across the country. Arise News gathered that protesters were being attacked at the Lagos venue on Sunday while the police looked away. Hundreds of thousands had taken to the streets in different cities demanding relief from economic hardship and widespread insecurity in the protest which started last Thursday and are meant to continue until August 10th. According to Amnesty International, at least 13 people have been killed in clashes with the police since Thursday. While police have put the death toll at seven and are blaming some of those on accidents and an explosive device. We now turn to President of Ijo Youth Council, Dr. Theophilus Alaye, to share why the major parts of the Niger Delta is not so enthusiastic about the ongoing nationwide protest and what can be done to improve living conditions in the oil-rich region. Good afternoon, Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday. Thank you very much and good afternoon for having me. Of course, thank you. Now, given the history of activism in the Niger Delta, why do you think there's less enthusiasm for the current nationwide protests from that region? Um, thank you very much. You know, the Niger Delta, in as much as we know, is uh, one peculiar region where activism, agitation, is always at the top gear. You know, we are known for our agitation on issues that has to do with the people of the Niger Delta. And today, it's not also this particular nationwide protest against uh, bad governance is not also different. Be that as it may, what we have come to understand and uh, get in this protest is that uh, while the people of the Niger Delta, the masses, the majority of the Niger Delta people are fed up with the cost of living that they are experiencing and the bad governance that they have had over time, the, those that found themselves within the corridor of power have decided to suppress the voice of the people. You know, the Niger Delta, as I told you earlier before, is one region that we are known for our agitation, especially the Azure extraction. But what has come out to play is that those with, that found themselves within the corridor of power have decided not to give the people the opportunity to express their displeasure. Uh, what happened, like in uh, Bayelsa State, the people came out to register their displeasure, and those that found themselves within the corridor of power both the opposition and the main party doesn't want the people to express their view. They end up hiring hoodlums deliberately to attack peaceful protesters. We can tell you that it is on good account that those that were hired by some House of Rep members in Bayasa State ended up opening gunfire at the peaceful protesters between Opolo and Biogolo. And about 16 of them sustained injury, and we are even getting a figure that two of those persons that sustained gun injury have died. This is just because those within the corridor of power, both the main party and the opposition, have decided to please the president against the position of those that they are governing. You see, people that found themselves in the pool of our common resources have decided to give the yearnings of the masses deaf ear. In as much as the Niger Delta is concerned, the same scenario that played out in Bayasa State is the same scenario that played out also in the Wari Axis. Those that have found favor within the presidency have decided that everybody must be satisfied the way they are satisfied with the contracts that are before them and they just want to please Mr. President by suppressing those that want to come out. Like me that is speaking here today, I was even declared wanted to be arrested by the security parasatal by a governor of a state just because IYC as a youth organization that is not a department of government happens to have some internal wranglings. This is the first time in history that a serving governor will come out to say that because a youth organization is having issues, and for that singular reason, one side of those youth organizations should be arrested just because one side of 
the leadership refused to toe the part that that particular governor refused to toe. And he has decided to declare that particular person wanted. Calling a security meeting and telling all the government um, security parasitas and agencies that because this man is speaking for the masses, that he should be arrested because he doesn't want or they don't want the world to know that Bayasa is also having the negative impact of bad governors. Secondly, this is the first time in history that they have now turned Nigeria, the entire nation, into an IDP camps, where a cup of rice is now being shared to people. That is not the Nigeria of our dream. The Nigeria of our dream is a nation that where economy will be booming, those that have graduated from university can easily get job and feed their family and not to be feared as refugees. Okay. This is the first time that you will see that a government will be sending out a lot of funds to be given to people to share foods. We don't need f uh, food banks. Okay. What we need is job opportunities. All right, Dr. Theophilus. The government, Dr. Theophilus. what I'm trying to say is that, what I'm, no, what I'm, okay. yes, what I'm trying I'm going to, to let you allow understand you is to, that uh, the Niger uh, Delta people, I, I will allow you to, to expand uh, on, on, on your thoughts. Of course, the, this interview is continuing. I just wanted to interject just to get your, your thoughts. Uh, and also, I just want to recap. So you're saying that the people of Niger Delta wanted to come out and protest. They attempted to do so. However, all of those attempts were thwarted by the powers that be, whether it be ruling party or opposition party, whoever was in the corridors of power squashed the attempt to do so. Now, my question to you is, what is the way forward since you do agree with the, uh, with, with the end governance, hashtag end governance protests, uh, and you want to participate and your freedom to, uh, to, your freedom to protest has been taken away from you, as you say, what is your next course of action? Um, um, as I speak to you, I'm trying to just tour around the entire Niger Delta state to give those states that have given the people the opportunity to express their view like river states, to give them solidarity that, yes, this is the position of the people of the Niger Delta. And I'm also trying to get across because the federal government of Nigeria decided to tag those that wanted to coordinate these protests as faceless people. We are all Nigerians. We don't need to hide our identity to make our position known to the Nigerian government. So we are also making attempt to get across to those national coordinators so that at least we should set up a committee. When these 10 days are over, the next protest that will be coming, there will be no faceless group of persons. Those that will be co coordinating the affairs of the protest against bad governance and hunger and uh, inflation will have face so that the government will know if they want to crucify us, they should come and crucify all of us. The message we want to pass across is that Nigerians are fed up. The people of the Niger Delta, especially the joint extractors, are fed up with this governance that have decided to give the yearnings of the people deaf ear. The cost of living in our riverine communities are becoming unbearable. unbearable. Inflation rate is over 200%. Cost of living is on the high side. People cannot get, people cannot get access to quality health care anymore. For you to get quality health care, that means you have to sacrifice your daily meal in order for you to get a good health care. And people are dying. It's unbecoming. And those that found themselves within the corridor of power in the Niger Delta have decided to suppress the voice of those that are in, in this suffering. Believe you me, it's a tenor system. They don't have what it takes to decide if they are going to give us freedom or not. It is our responsibility, it is our constitutional right to express our displeasure at any given point in time when governance has failed us. And the people of the Niger Delta are not an exception. We are part of the protest. If you go to the Wari Axis, I can tell you for prayer, those within the corridor of power, we are using two by two plants, wood. I can even send you pictures, evidence. Those that we are heated, that got injuries. In Bayasa State, the governor of the day, the government of the day deliberately suppressed. I can tell you for free, those within the corridor of power hire talks to attack peaceful protesters with, 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 with arms and ammunition, firing openly at pro peaceful protesters. I was a major target, but believe you me, because of my um, um, information that I gathered, 
we have to distance ourselves from the main protesters to express and I was able to coordinate my people and we register our displeasure on the first day of the protest. But after seeing that they have declared being wanted by the security agencies that we are the people that want to go and cause mayhem and uh, crisis, we have to take a bar and move to another of the Niger Delta states where your people are also having the pains of this uh, bad governance that we are experiencing. So the people of the Niger Delta are also part of those that have hit by this bad governance and wrong economic policies. Even with the speech that Mr. President gave, you can see clearly that there is no hope for the people of the Niger Delta and Nigeria at large. Because after removing fuel subsidy, I was believing that if this president is a president that has economic understanding, by now, all the three refineries that is owned by the federal government would have been functional to be producing petrol to crash down the high cost of petrol products. All right, the refinery like Dangote refinery would have been having problem of having crude oil to produce petrol. The Azikel refinery that is 90% completed would have been a partner by the federal government to make sure that by this point in time, Azikel refinery in Bayase State would have been producing crude. The modular refineries that have completed their uh, infrastructural uh, by 90 to 100% would have been producing. But the insincerity of the government and lack of understanding of the plight of the people have made them not to give ears. And that is why we are saying that those that are within the corridor of the NNPC and the Petroleum Ministry that have failed Mr. President after one year in office for these things not to come to office ought to have been fired. Right, but no. just because the government of the day does not understand the cries of the people, that is why you can still see that those people are still within of, in office. Fire okay. anybody that is in your team that is not performing, especially the petroleum ministry. Dr. Those persons need to be fired so that those that can bring the oil refineries to function so that petrol price can be reduced or crashed down should be given the opportunity to manage their affairs. It right, is Dr. our nation. Lai. We are not against anybody, but a nation that will be giving us the needed dividends of democracy. We certainly hear you. Um, thank you for your narration of, of your what you said you experienced. Of course, over here we haven't had any reports of the government of Bayosa attacking protesters from the facts that we have on ground. But let's touch on other um, matters that you hi highlighted. You said you've set up a committee that will will not be faceless after the August uh, um, August tenth date, which is you know which after which the period for the protest would probably have elapsed. And you also said that you plan to ensure that your voices um, are heard. And you mentioned an incident in Biosa State, which, already, which already, we've already told you that we don't have those facts on ground. But since you also stated that you've been a target and declared wanted, I'm just wondering, how do you intend to ensure that after August 10th, you can carry out your, your, your civic and fundamental human rights of letting your voice be heard, but how do you plan to ensure that those that will join you and also you are safe while administering that right or exercising that right? Um, we have, yes, we have told you all that uh, we are not a violence group of people. Uh, they were just trying to incite the security agencies against us just because we wanted to carry out a protest that by us as states, our citizens are also experiencing the hunger and the hardship in the country. But the government of the day want to tell us that there is no hunger in our state. Bayasa is one of the worst states when you come to um, 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 infrastructure. A state that people can boast of four hours light a day. And a government of that state will come out to tell you that Bayasa there is no hunger. It's laughable. We want sincerity of purpose. We, we the masses give you the, the mandate to manage our affairs for a period of three, four years. That does not mean that we are fools. How can you come that inflation that is affecting the entire nation is not affecting your state or the citizens that you are managing in your state? How is that possible? That alone is laughable. Okay, uh, doctor, it's an irony. Uh, doctor Alayes. So what we are saying. What, what's, your what saying, what's your position on... What we are saying... Okay, uh, we've heard you. What's your position on the 
uh, because we believe that the position of the Joy Youth Council through Jonathan Lokwoburi was that uh, the 10-point agenda does not address uh, the needs of the Niger Delta youth. That's according to Jonathan Lokwoburi. So is it a case that the Joy Youth Council has become factionalized or what's the position? Because there are multiple messages now coming out of the Joy Youth Council. Um, that, 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 that is not a member of IYC. Uh, that name you are calling is an INC member by virtue of age and uh, uh, constitution of the IYC. Those are a group of people that they have brought to bring uh, disunity in the uh, Azure Youth Council. So there's now there factionalism no within the Azure uh, Youth Council. There is, there is, there is no faction in Azure Youth Council. Those that are within the corridor of power that doesn't want the people, the masses, to have their say are those persons that have brought that particular individual on board to cause mayhem, so that the voice of the people cannot be heard. But the Azure Nation is bigger than those group of persons, and that is why you see that the Azure Nation have told them that that is not their president. I remain the president, but the those that found themselves within the corridor of power believe that he will do their bidding by telling the world that there is no hunger in the Azure Nation while we are facing a lot of hunger, that there is no inflation in the Azure Nation while the people of the Azure Nation are having serious inflation-related issues, and they are telling you that there is good governance in the Azure Nation why there is none. So... That one is not representing IYC. That is someone that is dining with those that found themselves within the corridor of power and they are not doing the bidding of a joint nation. Rather, it's an image or an individual that has been brought into cost division in council just because he wants to do the bidding of those that are within the corridor of power. He's not speaking for the joint nation and he can never speak for a joint nation because he's not known in IYC. He can never be IYC president because by virtue of our constitution, he's over age. And IYC is not an organ of any government. IYC is a pressure group. And that is why we have told you that he's not speaking for the Azure Nation. He's an appointee of government, and he is doing the bidding of the government of the day and not the bidding of Azure people. Azure people have come to tell the world that the inflation that is affecting Nigeria is affecting them. The hunger that is affecting Nigeria is affecting them. What they need is good policies that will uplift the living standard and the living condition of them that are living in the um, creeks, the royal areas. That is all. And that is the position of IYC. And that is why when they said that uh, his faction said that IYC is not going to protest, nobody or no group of person took them serious because that is not the position of IYC. The Jean Nation, the larger uh, group of the Jean people have said that the hunger is also being felt in their place. And the national protest is about bad governance and hunger. So why will you now come and tell us that uh, we are not part of such protests that has to do with our living condition, about the future generation of our youth and our people? We are part of the protest, and that is the position of IYC. Any other information or news that is coming from any other faction of IYC is not the position of IYC. Well, now we'd like to thank you for your time and insight, Dr. Teofilos Alaye, President of the Ijo Youth Council. Thank you for joining us here on Newsday. We appreciate your time and we wish you.